Hello, and welcome to the NFPA Link YouTube channel. This page is dedicated to answering key questions you have related to electrical and life safety. With easy to use digital access to NFPA codes and standards, NFPA Link is your window to productivity. Today we've been asked to review GFCI receptacle requirements using the 2023 National Electrical Code, or NEC. So from my desktop in Link, I'm going to navigate to the 2023 National Electrical Code. And I know from experience that 210.8 is where we want to go to look at GFCI receptacle requirements. So as we make our way to 210.8, I do want to go through this from the aspect of um, looking at the requirements within the 2023 NEC, but also look at how they compare to what has changed between the 2020 NEC and the 2023 NEC. So in Link, I can use a feature um, that shows me uh, the changes within that by clicking on uh, either the delta where it's provided here on the left-hand side, this triangle, or I wanna go up to the parent text to 210.8, um, and there's no delta right there, but there is the option, uh, and you have this option every time as well, to go into view changes uh, through those three dots to the right. So I'm gonna go to view changes, and what's on the left is the 2023 NEC that I went into uh, initially, but what's on the right is the previous text, which in this case is the 2020 NEC. Uh, so the highlighted portion there um, is a big, a big change or a, a significant change uh, in that they're requiring Class A GFCI protection to be provided. So it was never clarified before what type of GFCI needed to be utilized, uh, but it's now stated that for these, uh, these receptacles, they need to be Class A GFCI protection. So what is Class GFCI protection? So I've got another tab already open here for the sake of saving a little time. I'm going to click over to that, and I'm in Article 100, the definitions, um, and under the definition for ground fault circuit interrupter, or GFCI, if we look at the informational note, it tells us that a Class A ground fault circuit interrupter uh, trips when the ground fault current is 6 milliamps or higher and does not trip when the ground fault current is less than 4 milliamps. So that's the range... Um, or the thresholds that we're dealing with uh, when they tell you that it has to be a Class A GFCI protection that's utilized. So if we jump back over to 210.8, so that's the base rule that's, uh, that's changed in the parent text to 210.8. Now, 210.8 is broken down into um, two sections that I wanna cover during this video, which is sections A and B. So A is specific to dwelling units, and B is specific to other than dwelling units. Now there's some other sections that it goes into, uh, but I really just wanted to focus on these receptacles uh, for today uh, in these areas. So with that, I'm gonna go ahead and open uh, the changes here again. Um, so we can look at both the 2023 on the left, 2020 on the right. Uh, and as we go down through this, you can see bathrooms, uh, down through um, outdoors, crawl spaces, and basements all remain the same. Uh, now there's some renumbering that's going on between the two based on additions and subtractions, uh, but nothing has changed as far as the language in those sections. But if we're, if we're looking in 2023, that item seven is new to the 2023. So this is areas with sinks uh, that and permanent provisions for food preparation, beverage preparation, or cooking. So I think in those areas, something that defines cooking, uh, you know, whether it be a cooktop or a range or something of that nature, can make it pretty clear that that's an area that has permanent provisions for cooking. Food preparation and beverage preparation, on the other or other hand, are, you know, what is the, the defining term for that? So really, that's something you're going to want to have dialogue uh, with your AHJ around. Um, you know, what determines what is uh, food preparation and beverage preparation? Um, is it a countertop? Uh, is it where the countertop's located? So there's some dialogue that needs to happen around that to determine exactly, um, you know, what those are. So if you're in a position where you think uh, you may need to have that answer uh, based on what the installation entails, uh, it's probably a good idea to reach out to the AHJ and get that clarification. Um, when we get into uh, 
sinks uh, within six feet of the top inside edge that's been there. Boathouses, bathtubs and shower stalls. All this is, is pretty much indicative of what was in the 2020 uh, with the exception of adding that part seven. Um, any receptacle that's 125 to 250 volt uh, installed in these locations. They're, they're supplied by a single phase branch circuit that's 150 volts or less to ground. They have to have GFCI protection. So within these areas, items one through 12, uh, those are the, the areas within dwelling units that are requiring GFCI protection for those receptacles. Now, there are some exceptions that are uh, highlighted down here in the 2023 text. Um, and those cover exception number one is receptacles are not readily accessible and are supplied uh, 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 by a branch circuit dedicated to electric snow melting, de-icing or pipeline. So this is um, heat tape as it's sometimes referenced, you know, through gutters and things of that nature um, to try to keep that ice buildup out of there in the winter time. So the, those receptacles that are dedicated specifically or fed with a dedicated branch circuit to just feed that equipment do not need to have GFCI protection. So that's an exception. Um, exception two probably looks familiar and we'll jump back over to the 2020, but a receptacle that supplies only a permanently installed premises security system uh, shall be permitted to be omitted from GFCI protection. So that was in the 2020, if we go back up here, um, but it was located under sub item five or list item five, which is basement. So essentially it was an exception just to five. So if that receptacle fed a fire alarm or burglar alarm system uh, located in the basement, it didn't have to have GFCI protection. Now this change to put the exception number two uh, outside of just being listed under basements now applies anywhere. So if you have uh, maybe the garage is where the uh, security system panel is located. You know, if it's dedicated directly to that, it does not need to uh, have GFCI protection in that case, um, as long as it's permanently installed. Um, exception number three uh, gets around listed weighted supported ceiling receptacles uh, and attachment fittings. These are specific products that are utilized for that. Um, and then exception number four is a new one. So this is for factory installed receptacles that are not readily accessible and are mounted internally to bathroom exhaust fan assemblies. Those do not require GFCI protection provided that the installation instructions or listing do not require it. So this is, uh, you know, that receptacle that's within the, the, uh, the exhaust fan housing um, that has the ability to plug in the motor. Uh, there's also sometimes if it's a, a fan light combo, you'll have the ability to plug in the light. Those do not require GFCI protection, even though they're within bathrooms, provided they're not readily accessible, which putting them behind that trim typically makes them not readily accessible. Uh, the only caveat to that, again, is the installation instructions or listing requiring GFCI protection. So where it's physically installed within that bathroom may require that. For example, if it's installed within a, a shower or tub area, um, you may still have to protect that uh, with a GFCI in that case, even though it's not readily accessible and it's internal to the bath van. So you're gonna wanna look at that and verify um, whether or not the instructions require that based on the installation. Um, as we move down into part B, uh, I wanna take again a look at both uh, the 2020 and the 2023 NEC and look at those changes. So bathrooms uh, is as is, and again, you see some numbering, so that the renumbering happened um, within uh, the 2023 because there's quite a few things added here so when you look at the 2020 over on this side you'll see there's some numbers skipped and that just has to deal with how things used to be labeled in the 2020 and how it's it's changed in the 2023 um, but those are chronologically labeled if you look in the actual 2020 NEC um, but so kitchens has changed a little bit so in the 2020 you'll see this area where it said kitchens or areas with sink and permanent provisions for either food preparation or cooking. So that portion that I have highlighted right now actually moved down into subpart three here uh, in the 2020, so this area here, but they've also added beverage preparation to that. So now we're talking, other than dwelling units, we're talking commercial property. So in this case, it could be um, restaurants, stores, things of that nature. So when we talk beverage preparation, 
I think of, uh, you know, maybe a, 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 a coffee house where you've got baristas there that are making, um, you know, uh, beverages. Certainly those liquids that are there can be conductive if they're spilled, things of that nature. Um, so whereas the GFCI protection wasn't required before in those applications, uh, that beverage preparation addition, um, you know, now adds that to that equation. Um, buffet serving areas with permanent provisions for food serving, beverage serving, or cooking uh, have been added as list item four. Uh, so buffets, you know, ironically, there's a lot of stuff going on in buffets typically where, uh, you know, people are, um, you know, spilling things, uh, you know, refilling things, things of that nature. There's typically a lot of conductive materials there as they're, uh, the structure's typically made out of uh, uh, conductive metals. Uh, you know, so this uh, requires that those, those receptacles within that area have the GFCI protection that's needed. Um, Rooftops and outdoors uh, stay the same. Um, seven, sinks where receptacles or cord uh, and plug connected fixed stationary appliances are installed within six feet. So before this used to always be about, uh, if we went over here, where receptacles are installed within six feet from the top inside of the sink. So it was always about the location of the receptacle. The issue being that when you have appliances that have a certain length of cord you could have the receptacle technically that's uh it's six and a half feet away from the inside of the sink which wouldn't require gfci protection however it could be feeding a uh, garbage disposal um you know that has a, a three foot cord that'll reach over now that garbage disposal is within six feet of the sink and subject to the potential uh you know to get wet um from the sink overflow or things of that nature so now because the receptacle was at six and a half feet, it wouldn't require GFCI protection, and that garage or that garbage disposal no longer has uh, GFCI protection that would seem to be the appropriate thing considering where it's installed in relation to the sink. Uh, so now it's not just about the receptacle uh, location, but also where any cord and plug connected fixed or stationary appliances are located within six feet of the sink. Uh, indoor damp and wet locations was you know, altered to clarify that it was a either or so it's indoor damp or locations uh, has been changed 13 um, is new as far as aquariums uh, bait wells and similar open aquatic vessels or containers uh, you know i think of this you know our our, our cottage we have um, a bait shop that has uh, plastic drums that have um, filters in them for minnows and things of that nature uh, and you know up until this this point uh, with this being added uh, in list item 13 in the 2023 NEC there technically wasn't anything that I can think of based on how those are installed you know they're indoors you know they're not in an area that would have necessarily required GFCI protection even though you know they're they're full of water and they've got a filtration system and things of that nature so this this starts to help areas like that you know larger aquariums um, and, and things of that nature um, that are, you know, indicative of, of having water involved, uh, but don't have or didn't previously have GFCI protection requirements. Um, so, and there are of course some some exceptions here that were they're added and, and things of that nature. But this is this is the gist of kind of what changed between the 2020 and 2023 NEC. Um, you know those requirements. Uh, you know around bathrooms, kitchens, outdoors, uh, areas where it just makes sense because of, of you know, water uh, being involved in the conductivity potential that's there based on that. So um, I hope this helps uh, to give you a little more insight into GFCI receptacle requirements using the 2023 NEC. For more info about how NFPA Link gives you the knowledge that you need to get the job done right, please visit nfpa.org forward slash link.